Hello, sixth grade social studies student. This is Miss Tolman helping out Miss Halbert. Let me see the lessons for you. We are in our unit nine, Renaissance and the Age of Exploration, and we are on lesson three, the Age of Exploration. It's a good idea to take notes as we go through this. It will not only help you in the questions below, but on any tests or quizzes you may have coming up. All right, here we go. Vocabulary. Caraval was a Portuguese ship that could sail on the rivers and rough seas. Circumnavigation is to travel all the way around something by boat. And we have a world history click through, get the people you need to know. Very good idea to go ahead and click through that. All right. The Silk Road was a trade route among, along which merchants from the Mediterranean region and the Far East exchanged goods. The rise of the Ottoman Turks in the 14th century changed that. Travel along the route became dangerous and costly. Raiders attacked caravans. They stole traders' goods. The Turks required ooh, taxes and tolls for traders to pass through their land. Traders were forced to look for routes that did not pass through Turkish control. For hundreds of years, the fear of the un unknown kept European sailors from sailing west. Many believed that if one sailed far enough, they would sail over the edge and into the fire of the sun. The idea might seem ridiculous to us, but the sailors of the time had no proof otherwise. Exploration and trade. It's a good video to look at and watch through. The Portuguese explorers. In 1415, Portugal took control of the Straits of Gibraltar from the Muslims. This opened the possibility of trade routes in Africa. However, travel across the Sahara was costly and difficult. Portuguese traders developed sea trade routes along the west coast of Africa. Portugal's Prince Henry thought that the Orient could be reached by traveling th around Africa. He encouraged the development of new ships and navigation equipment, including the Caraval. The Caraval was a small, sturdy ship. It could navigate rivers as well as rough ocean waters, and it was ideal for exploration. After many voyages, the Portuguese finally decided the continent's southern tip. The captain to lead the expedition was Bartholomew Diaz. Diaz named the point of Africa's tip the Cape of Storms. It was quickly renamed by the king the Cape of Good Hope, and rightly so. In 1498, 11 years later, Vasco, Vasco de Gama, another Portuguese captain, sailed around the Cape of Good Hope and made it to India. The success of Diaz and Gama led to Portuguese control of the spice trade to Europe. The Muslims tried to attack the Portuguese ships, but they were no match. Soon, Portugal extended its dominance to, of the spice trade in Asia to ports in China. The spice trade made Portugal a wealthy nation despite its relatively small size. And here we have Vasco da Gama. And here is Vasco da Gama's route to India. It's a good idea to go ahead and click start and click on through that. It's really awesome. Christopher Columbus. Hmm. Christopher Columbus was born in Genoa, Italy, Italy in the year 1451. He became a sailor at a young age and lived in Portugal for a time. In 1485, Columbus proposed a plan to the king of Portugal. He wanted to explore the Atlantic Ocean for routes to India, but the timing was wrong. Diaz's successes had blinded the Portuguese. They could see no need to spend any time or money exploring a western route to Asia, or to India. An event took place in 1491 that made Columbus's journey possible. Spanish Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand captured Granada. This victory, called the Reconquista, we learned about that before, ended almost 800 years of Muslim presence in Spain. A golden age dawned for Spain. The nation was ready to explore and expand. Columbus took his plan to Spain. Queen Isabella was not interesting, interested in establishing a trade route. But Columbus told her that there was the possibility of converting the Chinese to the Roman Catholic faith. This convinced her to give her wholehearted support. On August 3, 1492, Columbus and his crew of 88 men sailed west in search of China's coast. Columbus had three ships under his command, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. After four weeks at sea, Columbus's crew began to get fearful. They, they demand that Columbus return to Spain. Columbus promised to turn back if land was not sighted in three days. Two days later, a cry came from the lookout. Land! Land! Mm. 
Believing that he had reached Asia, Columbus sent out men in search of gold, spices, and Chinese, the Chinese Mongol ruler. None was found. Instead, he had found the West Indies, the Caribbean islands. With the support and hopes of Ferdinand and Isabella, Columbus made three more voyages. He found small amounts of gold, but no spice and no Chinese. Line of demarcation. Arguments over the rights to Columbus' discoveries began almost immediately. In 1494, the Treaty of Tordesillas was signed by Spain and Portugal. It established a line of demarcation that ran north and south through the Atlantic Ocean. The treaty gave Spain the ownership of all the lands west of the line. Portugal was allowed the rights to the unsettled lands east of the line. In addition, the Portuguese were given the right to colonize parts of Africa. They also retained control of the eastern trading routes to India and China. The New World. Whoa. Columbus continued to believe until his death in 1506 that he'd reached Asia. Italian captain and merchant Amerigo Vespucci made several voyages across the Atlantic. Vespu Vespucci determined that Columbus had discovered was, in fact, a new world. This in included in this new world was a continent. This continent became South America. When mapmakers redrew their maps, Vespucci's name, Vespucci's first name, Amerigo, was used to name the continent. Another Italian sailor, John Cabot, secured the support of Henry VII of England. Cabot theorized that Columbus had crossed the Atlantic too far to the south. In 1497 to 98, Cabot sailed around the tip of Greenland and discovered that what we now know as North America. Ignoring the Treaty of Tor Torcidias, Cabot claimed the land for England. Others tried unsuccessfully to find a northern passage to Asia. It wasn't until Ferdinand Magellan's voyage of 1519 that a western route to Asia was finally discovered. Magellan, Magellan, a Spaniard, sailed south around the tip of South America. He continued west, spanning the great ocean that he had named the Pacific, which means peaceful. Magellan was killed in the Philippines while involving himself in a conflict between the natives. However, Magellan's crew continued, finding their way to the Spice Islands. They crossed the Indian Ocean, sailed around Africa, and arrived home three years after their departure. The circumnavigation of the Earth verified that the Earth was round and its oceans wide. Of, of foremost concern to the Spanish was the distance to Asia. A western route was too long and dangerous to make a profit. They would turn their attention to the mysteries and riches of the New World. And here are your questions. Woo -hoo. So that is your lesson three. Please let us know if you have any questions. You're doing a fantastic job. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.